Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about the difference between the velocity form of the PID equation and the positional form of the PID equation. In our last video of our PID series, we showed how the integral and proportional work together to make a proportional integral control. And a lot of you were surprised by the results we got. So just to recap, if we go to our PID equation here, and I just put a proportional of 10, and I'm gonna leave the integral and derivative at zero, then when I start our system, we don't really get any result. It's kind of just sitting here dead. And then I switched the proportional to zero and the integral to 10. And then when we did it, we did see some action in it. And a lot of you said there had to be something wrong with my setup because the proportional should be the process minus the set point times the gain. But the issue is that's for a positional controlled PID and we have a velocity controlled PID. And earlier on in the series, I showed how the PID was not the error times the gain, it was the change in error. So just to help clear that up a little more, here is a document by Rock Automation that I have been using a lot throughout this series. And it goes through some really good details about the PIDE instruction. But mainly right here on page two, it talks about the velocity versus the positional control. And it says the PID instruction uses velocity form of the algorithm for the PID equation. Essentially, this means that the loop works on the change in the error of the output. Traditional PID algorithms used in PLCs have used positional form algorithms. A positional formed algorithm works directly on the error. Although this is acceptable for simple applications, the velocity form algorithm is much easier to apply for more advanced applications such as adaptive games and multi-loop selection. For this reason, most DCSs have traditionally used velocity form algorithm. Likewise, the Logix controller family also takes advantage of the more advanced properties of the velocity form algorithm. And then right below it, it shows here, here is your traditional PID. And even then, when I say traditional, this is not the one that I always see. In fact, right here is the Slick 500s. You'll notice it's not exactly the same. See, in this case, this is what we call an independent gain formula. And so the gain is multiplied by the error strictly. KP is our proportional gain, E is our error. But in the case of the Slick 500, it's a dependent equation. So right here, in this case, it's KC is our gain, and it's multiplied by the error, the integral calculation, and the derivative calculation. So that's a dependent equation. But right below it, it does show the velocity one, which we've been going through in this series. And mainly here, you see that little triangle? That means the change in the error. That's not the error itself. It does talk about one other thing, mainly we've hit on the error, but also the accumulation of the integral term is contained in the previous output in the velocity form and the summation of the integral term in the positional form. The following sections explain why that's important. And I'm not gonna get in the weeds of the details and the math in here. Obviously they made the change because it is much more advanced. And I think that's the main thing this document gets at. Also, just so we're clear, this is different than the independence gain formula versus the dependence gain formula, because we do still have that in our Studio 5000. And we're gonna hit it in a later video. I do wanna hit one other thing about the adaptive gains down here, because I think this helps you understand a little more of why maybe they transitioned to this. One of the big advantages of a velocity form algorithm 
is the implementation of adaptive gains. Implementing adaptive gains simply means that you change the proportional integral and derivative gains in a running loop. This is often desirable since a process may have many different operating characteristics depending on the operating environment. And they, they go through probably the most popular example of this is like an extruder barrel. If you have a temperature control, then typically you're heating the barrel and you're also cooling the barrel to keep it at a precise temperature. So, and I've seen some really just crazy, um, let's call these transfer methods of going from a heating PID equation to a cooling PID equation. So what they're saying here is that you can smooth that out a lot. Also, you can have multiple PIDs much easier. So if we scroll down a little bit more in this document, right here they're talking about it. Mainly, we're gonna be monitoring temperature here and pressure in this process. And so we can have two enhanced PIDs and then if one of them's too high, or mainly we're wanting to cap off based off these two separate things. I mean, so it's not like temperature kind of here, it is temperature and pressure. We can combine these two outputs, and then we can choose the lowest of the two of them, and then we can feed whichever one we ended up with back into the front of that PIDE. So it gives you a tremendous amount more flexibility. Also, while we're at it, this is the process for the Connected Components Workbench in the Micro 800 series. And I'm still working through this one because there are a few differences in this one, but even it, it works a little bit differently. So mainly, there are a lot of different PID equations out there. Also, I wanna warn a lot of you against using Wikipedia, really for your in-depth facts, because a lot of you sent me this PID controller article on Wikipedia to explain why mine should work differently, is if we look down in here, then fundamental operation, it talks about, yeah, there's three of them, but mainly here, term P, term P is proportional to the current value of set point minus process variable error. For example, if the error is large and positive, the control output will be proportionally large and positive, taking into account the gain K factor. And that is not how our PIDE works in the Control Logics and Compact Logics PLC. This is a positional PID equation that they're talking about here. In fact, is the word positional even used in here? No, it is, so it is not actually used do they even talk? Let's see, velocity. Uh, they're talking a little about velocity. Let's, okay. All right, so there is a vague mention, thus a velocity algorithm for imp implementation of, uh, oh my goodness, a lot of big words. Okay, so there's a vague mention of a velocity algorithm, and okay, this isn't, is this? This is a dependent velocity form PID algorithm, but man, they just blew over it really fast, and yeah, there's not even a link that I can click to to talk to learn about it. So be really careful going to Wikipedia and determining that this is how you should program your PID, because this isn't the same thing that we have here. So I hope this video has helped you understand the difference between the velocity form of the PID and the positional form of the PID. And I'll also put a link to this whole video series down in the description because I think it's been important that we have broken down the P and the I and in an upcoming video, the D, so that we truly understand exactly what they do. Because once you see the action they actually make, or maybe in this case, the inaction that we saw with the proportional control, then you can begin to understand that, okay, maybe what we're seeing out there on the internet is not exactly how this one works. And maybe that's why we can't figure out how to make our PIDs work or get them tuned properly. So I'll put a link to our PLC trainer with the Compact Logics PLC that we've been used to this series and Industrial Concepts PID trainer. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. 
Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.